Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? At the beginning of the 2010s, online video was growing rapidly, and with it, the number of digital video cameras. But this one from an unlikely brand had an extra feature to try to set itself apart. This is the Shoot and Share. It's a digital camera launched in 2011 by a brand not normally associated with consumer electronics, 3M. It was originally priced at $299 US and I managed to find one new in box, though admittedly it wasn't that hard for reasons we'll get to in a bit. It came with a power adapter, mini USB and AV cables, and a CD-ROM with the instruction manual and media conversion software. The camera's sides and front are plastic, but the back is made of metal, and the whole thing has a reasonable weight and surprisingly solid feel. The power switch is a mechanical slider that's in a somewhat annoying location, and the shoot and share takes several seconds to start up. The menu system is simple and quite easy to figure out and navigate. The capacitive touch buttons on the face are also very responsive. I expected the interface to be a slow, frustrating experience, but it just wasn't. That said, I could also see those touch buttons being prone to accidental presses, especially the still photo shutter. And as for still photos, it can shoot up to 8 megapixel images, but since the sensor itself is only 5 megapixels, those larger files are simply interpolated. There's a zoom control, but it's digital, so again, picture quality suffers. The lens is fixed focus and has a relatively telephoto field of view. I'd put it at about 44 millimeters in full frame equivalent terms, but I can only estimate that. While the unit says its lens is 7.15 millimeters, I couldn't find any reference to its sensor size. The shoot and share also lists a relatively slow aperture of f3, so low light performance, as you might have guessed, is pretty bad. To help things a bit, there's a white LED positioned just below the lens, and it gets decently bright. But you of course end up with that Blair Witch kind of look. And in good lighting conditions, image quality is, well, not much better actually. Colors are washed out, the image is soft, dynamic range is horrible, and the fixed focus only renders things sharp that are several feet away. Forget trying to take any close-ups. The 2.4 inch screen isn't amazing, but works okay. It's pretty low resolution and susceptible to getting washed out in bright sunlight. But since the camera's fixed focus and there's absolutely no manual control over any of the image settings like white balance, well, you pretty much only need to worry about pointing it in the right direction anyway. This camera also shoots 720p video, and I was constantly thrown off by its form factor. We're all so used to having to turn our phones sideways to shoot video in proper landscape orientation, it was a struggle to remember to keep the shoot and share vertical. This was of course a conscious decision on the part of its designers, as the shoot and share's primary competition was the much more popular and well-established line of flip video cameras, which have a similar form factor. The quality of the HD footage is really about the same as with still photos. It's noisy, even in daylight, and the automatic adjustments to exposure happen in noticeable steps instead of smoothly like other cameras. Compared to a Flip Ultra HD from 2010, there's just no comparison. The Flip's 720p footage just holds up way better. And out of the box, you wouldn't be able to shoot much footage at all, as the shoot and share only came with 12 megabytes of user accessible storage. It's a good thing there's a micro SD card slot on the side, and it'll accept capacities of up to 32 gigabytes. And on the opposite side is an HDMI port for showing off your potato quality photos and video on a TV. Now you might have noticed the tripod thread on the back and thought, well, that's a weird place to put that. And it is, but it's not for when you're using the camera. It's for the shoot and share's other main feature, its built-in projector. 
The lens is at the top and has a focus wheel on the right side. 3M advertised it as being able to produce up to a 65-inch image, but with its LED lamp producing only 14 lumens of brightness, that wouldn't make for a very good experience. And the projector is a mixed bag in other ways. It only features a resolution of 640x480 in a 4x3 aspect ratio, despite the fact that one of the camera's major selling points is its 16x9 video capture. There's also just a small mono speaker on the back, and it's not terribly loud. But for impromptu use at smaller image sizes, it's actually not too bad. And a closer look at the included AV cable reveals another trick. These aren't for getting signal out of the shoot and share, it's for getting signal in. You could connect a composite video source like a game console and use it like any other so-called Pico projector. Well, assuming you can find one that sends a signal the shoot and share wants to sync with. Now, it may seem like 3M put a lot of work into producing the shoot and share, but in reality, it did hardly anything. The camera is just a rebadged and slightly customized version of the ApeTec Pocket Cinema Z20. It also arrived on the market a few years too late. Its aim was to steal sales from would-be buyers of the flip camera line, and the novelty of having a built-in projector certainly could have swayed some buyers in its favor. But by 2011, the market was starting to get saturated, and consumers were gradually shifting to high-definition camcorders with flash storage, or this increasingly popular item called the smartphone. But what really sealed the shoot and share's fate was the sudden discontinuation of Flip's entire product line in the middle of 2011. Cisco Systems had acquired Flip in 2009, but it became clear this was a bad decision. The company had little experience in the consumer electronics business and probably also disliked the slim profit margins that market usually brought. You would think its discontinuation would have helped its competitors like the shoot and share, but it seemed to do the opposite. No clear market leader stepped in to fill its place. Flip was such a dominant name in the casual video camera category, it really just felt like the end of an era. Accordingly, sales of the shoot and share were slow and a lot of stock likely went unsold. A number of brand new units can still be found on eBay, though they're listed at strangely high prices. At the time I checked, there hadn't been any that were actually sold recently, so at least no one seems to be paying that much. But what about when it was new? $300 US was a good bit more than what similar cameras were selling for, but those also usually didn't include expandable storage or, of course, a built-in projector. For someone who wanted all those features and weren't picky about image quality, it might have been worth the price but it's pretty clear that most people were looking elsewhere. If you liked the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.